Hello. So in addition to the video that sort of finished up the lecture from today, there were also quite a few questions uh, in both the nine and the 10 o'clock about the exam. And if I didn't answer your question in class, I'm sorry, but I really like to create sort of videos and announcements for these types of things so that those students who maybe don't come to class can still get you know, all the information. So, and also, we only have a very finite amount of class time, and I don't want to use it on announcements. Uh, announcements, you know, can be, y'all can get that from a video just as well as from class time. So here are some basic announcements and frequently asked questions about the exam based upon uh, the questions that I've seen. So first things first, uh, some frequently asked questions about the individual portion of the exam. Uh, when is the exam? The individual portion will open Monday at noon and close Tuesday at 11.55 p.m. Where is the exam? The exam is a Moodle quiz that will be under the exam one section on Moodle. So you'll move from unit one to exam one. Will I need a calculator? Yes, you will. That is for sure. Is the exam timed? Yes. As described in the syllabus, you will have two and a half hours to complete it. This is you know, basically I'm giving everyone in the class two and a half times uh, the time really needed to complete it. Um, based upon the MCAT calculation, it should take about an hour. I'm giving everyone two and a half hours, and this includes time to upload your work. If you want the full time, therefore, the full two and a half hours, you need to start by 9.25 p.m. Your submission will close at 11.55. So if you start at 11 o'clock, you get 55 minutes. So make sure you start plenty early with plenty of time in the bank. Um, I won't be taking any excuses of I started late. It's already open for 36 hours almost. So make sure you start early and get it done um, so that you're not you know, short on time. Uh, do I have to sign into Zoom or some other proctoring service? No, I'm actually going to trust you to abide by the rules of the exam. Well, then what are the rules? Well, the exam is open book, open note, open Wikipedia, open Khan Academy, open course videos, open textbook, open homework, all of that stuff. It is basically, if it's on the internet, published Monday morning, it's fair game. What you are not permitted to do is ask your peers, either in this class or out of this class, or your friends, or someone via Chegg or Course Hero or anything like that, that's off limits. You cannot ask about the specific questions on the exam, but you are allowed to use whatever resources are available. Uh, what's the format of the exam? What does it look like? Well, I've uploaded the exam from the fall as a practice exam under exam one on Moodle. And the format will be the same. So go have a look at that and you can get a very good feel for what the format of the exam is going to be like. How should I study for the exam? Well, there's a video again on Moodle under exam one that really talks about this. Now the video mentions a uh, closed book, but that's because it's from the before time before COVID. Um, your exam is open book as described already, but most of the other study guides uh, ideas in there are about. What if I have a question about one of the exam problems? Well, I'm going to be on Zoom for far too long, like, you know, basically a good chunk of Monday afternoon and a huge chunk of the day on Tuesday. Um, if you are concerned about being able to ask for help on exam problems, Make sure you do your exam during one of those periods where I am online. Um, and then you can just pop into the Zoom meeting and ask, or you can log into the Zoom and just be there and take it there. That's fine too. Either way, it's fine. Um, but you know, there's a whole bunch of hours where I will be on Zoom answering uh, questions about exam problems. And you can either just drop in or take it there, either one, or not show up at all. That's okay too. Also gotten some questions about the collaborative portion. So here's the frequent questions. Uh, how does the collaborative portion work? 
Well, it's going to be a very similar exam to the individual. However, he will get multiple attempts per problem, which you will not get on the individual exam. But there will be a penalty for each attempt. If you're on a team that I organized, one of these ones named after super awesome scientists, then you will be expected to do it together and only one of you on the team needs submit it. If you are not on a team organized by me, you're totally still allowed to work with other people, but you must submit your own exam. I don't know who you're working with, so you have to all submit your, your own exams, okay? What are the rules for the collaborative portion? Same as for the individual exam, with the exception of you are allowed to talk, of course, with your, your sort of group of people you're working with. But Chegg, Course Hero, you know, uh, friends you might have who are physics majors, that is still off limits. When will the collaborative portion open? It will open Thursday morning and is due at Friday at 11.55 p.m. Um, I will give time on Friday during class to do it. Uh, this is because most people have at least blocked off that uh, bit of time there during class uh, to work on it. So it makes it easier for you to navigate the schedules. So I will give you class time Friday to work on it. Is the collaborative portion timed? Yes, it's still timed at two and a half hours, but no one has ever needed more than like 45 minutes to do it. It goes much quicker because you've already thought about the problems, that sort of thing. So the time has never been a factor for the collaborative part. A few other notes with regards to the exam, a few other announcements and notes. Uh, you do have lab next week. Uh, so lab continues on just like if we were face to face, you'd have lab on exam week. Same is true here. Uh, lab continues except for Wednesday, which is a wellness Wednesday. And I highly encourage you to take that day off as much as you can. Rest, recharge your batteries, sleep, binge watch a show, go for a walk outside, do something, relax and recharge. Uh, you know, this is the only breaks we're going to get this semester. Uh, the help sections next week will not be allowed to answer questions on unit one. Uh, so starting Monday at noon, no questions on unit one will be answerable in help sessions. All the TAs have been told this already. And so that's going to be the rule. That's so that those people who are, you know, maybe in India or China and way ahead, and for them, it's thus more convenient to take the exam, you know, basically late Monday night, East Coast time, you know, aren't at a disadvantage to those people who would prefer to take it Tuesday afternoon. So to, make, to sort of even the playing field, no unit one questions next week, starting Monday at noon. They will be able, however, to answer questions on the lab. And if you have questions on the unit two homework, feel free to drop into a help session and they will happily help you out with that. Um, one thing that you might find interesting is after the individual exam is over, after you finish it, you finish it, you finish yours, an extra credit opportunity will automatically open for you on Moodle. So you'll see it, but it'll be locked until you finish your exam. And this will automatically open for you when you complete it. Um, it's a short reflection exercise that has been shown by research to improve performance on future exams. So not only is it a bonus, but there's a incentive for you to do it because it's been shown to help people on future exams. Uh, this reflection exercise is due Wednesday at 11.55 p.m., the usual due time, um, but partially because of Wellness Wednesday and partially because uh, to maximize the benefit of the exercise, I would highly recommend and encourage you to do it immediately after you finish the exam. It's a short exercise. It does not take very long. And it really works best if you do it right in the moment, right after you finish the exam, like right in the heat of the moment when you've got your emotions and everything going, that is actually the best time to do it. Um, even if those emotions maybe, you know, aren't so positive, that's actually still the best time to do it because you're the whole point is to learn and reflect. All right. So do it immediately, but I'm giving until Wednesday in case someone, because of work or family responsibilities or whatever, 
cannot do it immediately, I'm leaving it open until Wednesday at 11.55 p.m. However, since you're pretty much expected to do it immediately, there will not be any extensions on this uh, post-exam reflection exercise. Get it done by 11.55 on Wednesday. I really just do it right after you finish the exam and you know, don't worry about it. I will not be giving extensions on this. So academic honesty. I have to talk about it. Um, I wish I didn't, but I do. So a few things. Uh, first off, I like to frame this in a larger context of trust and science. The entire scientific enterprise is built on trust. We see that right now with the COVID-19 vaccine. Like there's this huge effort to convince people to trust that this was done well, right? And get the vaccine and get us out of this pandemic. So this whole enterprise is really built on trust. You know, we trust each other to do good work so we can build on it. We trust each other to report our data honestly, although we should still check because honest mistakes do happen and not everyone is honest. And this trust is really hard to build and very easily broken. You know, think of Dr. Fauci. He's been working for years to build up that trust with people. And that's why people trust him. Um, okay, so it's very hard to build and very easily broken. And it has real world consequences when that trust is broken. So here's a graph of the percent of US uh, children who have not received the MMR vaccine. So the solid line is the overall uh, fraction of children who have not received the MMR vaccine and the dashed is the people who've chosen uh, not to get the MMR vaccine. So the difference is, you know, people who are immunocompromised or, you know, various other reasons. Um, the famous Lancet paper that linked the MMR vaccine to autism came out in 1998. And you can see a spike immediately after that paper came out. So one person's dishonest science had lasting consequences. We're still fighting off measles outbreaks because of this person's dishonest science. And people have died from it. So honesty is really important. And I will also point out that that person has now been completely disowned by the scientific community. Um, so there's that too. So the whole scientific enterprise is built on trust. How does this relate to the exam? Well, like I mentioned, the exam is an open static resource. So the book is okay, the slides from class are okay, the videos from class are okay, Wikipedia is okay, Khan Academy is okay, the homework's okay, all of that is fine. But you can't ask people about the specific exam questions, like I said, that's not okay and Chegg, Course Hero, et cetera, is not okay, all right? So these are the rules. There will be an honesty statement that you will have to open and type your name in to sign it before you can unlock the exam. Um, but there's still an element of trust here, right? I am going to trust you to abide by that statement. I'm going to respect you and trust you to do it. And I know that most of you will. And I'm just asking that you please respect me, yourself, and the scientific enterprise by abiding by that honesty statement that will precede the exam. You want to see what it looks like? The practice exam has the exact same honesty statement. Um, before it so you can see what it's going to say. In fairness to the vast majority of you who I know will play by the rules, 
and out of respect for the scientific enterprise, I will be checking for violations of these rules. I have ways, I'm not stupid, I effectively have a PhD in data science, I'm better at this than you probably think I am. And as stated in the syllabus, if I catch you using an illicit resource on the exam, you fail the course. No excuses, no pleas, full stop, you fail the course, okay? Now, if you are having a legitimate circumstance, which given the current state of the world is likely to be true for some of you, please, 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 please show enough respect for me and for your peers to not cheat. Instead, reach out, reach out to me and talk to me and we can figure something else out. Okay, so please don't cheat reach out instead. If you cheat, it doesn't matter what your excuse is. Like I said, you fail the class. All right. I'm just being very upfront and I will be checking and I have ways to find these things. So this is not meant to be sort of a threat. This is just me being very upfront and honest with how it works and me actually showing my respect for you. I'm Respecting and trusting you to follow these rules, and I'm just asking that you give me the same courtesy. Hopefully this answers most of your questions about the exam, and this concludes this video.